Put, putting it down is always the hardest part. <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah. Um, it's always interesting with percussion because that's one of the, like, you have things that you're going to do things with, and then these things, in addition to making the sound, have a kind of, a, like, a responsibility that come along with them, mm. like, logistically and pragmatically. Like, they need to go somewhere, and they need to go to, like, somewhere, generally, hopefully, quietly. I'm, I'm looking at this. <laughs> So it doesn't like <coughs> just bleed the whole time. Um, yeah, like I mean, how do you negotiate? I guess it's like with notated music, it's easy enough because you can just pre-plan all this and you yeah prepare where you put yeah. your sticks after you do a certain gesture or yeah. whatnot. But yeah, no, I mean for for improvising, I mean I think that 
my, my setup kind of evolves over the course of playing. So like, as you can see now, if we took a snapshot of where we started, uh, this bell definitely wasn't <laughs> lying on the snare drum. You know, th these, you know th these bells were over there somewhere. You know, so everything kind of moves around in this yeah, fluid, yeah. fluid state. Uh, and I'm, I mean, yeah, th I have some carpeting to dampen when I'm trying to put things down quietly. But often I'm also interested in just combining different things together. Like what, what, you know, what does it sound like scraping these against these tiles? You know, yeah, so, yeah. so it's, it's also about yeah, this experimentation with uh, objects together. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting about that. And even with that, like, I guess with a setup is like this, where you have a lot of, I guess, geographical space. Like there's a lot of space around you, both in terms of objects, but also like physical space. Like, do you... Are you like chasing physical? I mean, obviously we're listening to stuff and we're like playing with each other, but like is, how much of it is driven by like location and proximity versus like, okay, I've put this object down. Is the fact that there are objects near it, mm -hmm. does that have a big influence? Or like, how, like, do you know, okay, I've got those bells over there as well. Maybe it's those bells versus this bell. Like how much of uh, the, the sort of the lay of the land um, impacts your, your playing both intentionally, like, Intentionally or not? Yeah, no, I think it, it, it's, it's very much, uh, I, I don't know if it's intentional or if it's not intentional, yeah. but very much the, where objects are uh, influences me because it, it's sometimes a thing where, okay, you know, I'm doing something over here, mm -hmm. how can I make that louder, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I can grab this item that's also here and keep okay. shaking everything together, you know, or, um, you know, maybe I, want, I can easily move some objects here to the symbol. Maybe I just put something down here, something else is nearby. So yeah, it, it, it is kind of a, uh, a motion. Uh, it, it's kind of the physicality of the, uh, of the instruments, I guess you could say, of the objects in relation to each other that mm -hmm. also dictates my movements. And with that in mind, how much of like your initial like pre-performance, like Nissan Plus stuff is performance already? Like how right. much of that is projected into the like, what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that's a good question. I think, um, I think th th some of it, uh, but also I'm not really, I, I kind of, so the way I approach setting up is, so I have a fairly standard setup with like the snare drum here, like a kind of a deconstructed drum kit, yeah. right? Snare drum, floor tom, a cymbal. Sometimes the cymbal's there though, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, and then these trap tables that just have stuff on them. Mm -hmm. uh, and the way I set the, the trap tables up, I don't think there's too much consistency. Um, maybe there is, like I definitely think that I leave my sticks to yeah. this side, uh, but, and these tiles tend to be here because um, of the way you can play the edges and mm -hmm. the center. Um, but it, like sometimes it's spring coils over there, you know, sometimes I just half adly you know, whatever's getting taken out of the bag, I place yeah, yeah. it wherever uh, there's space on the, on the table. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I think that th that also does dictate the course of the improvisation, whether the, the setup is intentional or not. Yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's interesting that way, because like, there's a lot of stuff that w you know, would happen in terms of with any setup, like you yeah. know, about the, where my angle is facing you or something, you know, like, it will have an impact, but I'm not yeah. thinking about that yeah. to a certain extent as, as setting up here, whereas like, in a situation like this, where these instruments, like a, a uh, almost in passing, decision is mm -hmm. that you're making now will have a potentially profound decision later yeah. on in performance and then like yeah. that's the object that's next to you that become and that becomes yeah. maybe an integral sound right yeah 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 for the shaping the performance yeah so. it, it, it like i've not like i i mean i don't do much like complex percussion this way but I've, i have done a lot of stuff where there's like plenty of objects afoot or preparations yeah. or even mm -hmm. like with guitar stuff like there's there's stuff around mm -hmm. and I tend to most often think just pragmatically like but it isn't as sprawling a setup it's just like where there's sure, like yeah. so many objects but it, it's, yeah, it's interesting to think of like that projection into the mm -hmm. performance time of yeah. what's going to happen. Because I, I think like definitely coming from a classical percussion background, mm -hmm. that projection is there. Because so much of my training was, okay, how, how do we, you know, manage this construction, this whole piece? How do we play through this piece, which maybe has tons of mallet changes, different instruments introduced. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe it's a, like I'm thinking multi-percussion setups that sometimes even surround you, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so really the preparation of where you put the instruments, where you um, decide in the score to put down a certain set of mallets and then pick another set up so that you can play the next note at the right time. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, you plan and dictate all of uh, what's going to happen based on how you've set it up. Um, so maybe some of that transfers over, except that I, I try to not take mm. as much of a rigid approach as yeah, I might yeah. with a 
it's classical piece. Yeah. yeah, it's interesting because even like in, in a classical context, some of these motions are still decoupled. Like you'll you'll have to pick up a mallet ahead of time, but mm -hmm. you're not there yet in the piece. Yeah, it's just because you need to. You won't be able to get it later. Exactly, you're gonna so be like, playing something else. They're not directly related to like a now thing. Like you're gonna yeah. grab the thing and put. You know. Yeah. Which takes like another kind of macro time. Mm -hmm. thing. I mean, I guess in this case, you're you make those notes and you learn that orchestration yeah. or physical orchestration mm -hmm. ahead of time. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah, in this case, there is that, uh, that nowness, like, okay, mm -hmm. I want to grab a new sound now, uh, maybe a new instrument now, so, so you can react quickly. But then uh, I always find I have um, a kind of a residue of the thing that I was doing last, and I have to fix that problem. So let's, I think actually it happened in this time. So I had two mallets, um, these, these black ones, uh, and... Um, and I, w I started to play something that needed the hand. So then the mallets weren't u being used, but they're kind of in getting in the way. <laughs> but I, I had to keep holding the mallet because yeah. otherwise, you know, I can just drop it and yeah. abandon it completely. Um, so, but then that was a challenge of how can I get rid of this mallet and mm. keep doing the, 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 the gesture uh, that I was doing. Uh, what did you do? What did I do? I think, I think I kind of juggled the mallets for a while and eventually, <laughs> you know, threw it to the side. <laughs> you have to watch back yeah, yeah, yeah. to actually see. But, yeah. It's interesting because a bunch of what we're talking about here that has some parallels to what's going on here, I guess, with this, like with yeah. like this particular instrument and this approach, I, I have no audio ahead of time of what we're yeah. doing. Yeah. And even like during the soundtrack or whatever, I captured some loud playing, but I, mm -hmm. I got rid of it when we started, right, which yeah. would have been nice to have as is in there. But like, it's almost like a philosophical thing. I'm going to start with yeah. that thing. And I was thinking this at the start. <laughs> I was like, are you going to keep the stuff that we yeah, just yeah. played, the loud stuff? Um, no? I kind of wish I would have at one point because it would have yeah. been like nice to have some contrast in there. But because one of the things that's limiting in this regard with that specific approach is that I only have what you've yeah. immediately done. Yeah. And as, as cool it is, is to like, did a sound, then I've got the sound. Like, the mm -hmm. I I want to avoid Mickey Mousing as much as possible. Yeah. So sure. like, I'm not just like ornamenting your immediate past. Yeah. As like a time thing. So like, I do have multiple buffers worth that I can kind of juggle and go between, but it still requires like, I'm only able to do things that you've made sound with, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. kind of is almost a similar problem, but in reverse. And that like, mm -hmm. there's a certain amount of setup there, and like, I have to negotiate this. And like, I might want to like, while you're doing a certain kind of language. I might want to go to a certain musical place, but I have only the resources and the transformations available to me. Mm -hmm. It needn't be this way, but this is like a philosophical like limitation yeah. of, of this kind of approach to just yeah. do the live sampling to kind of negotiate and like pragmatically, okay, like you're doing this kind of cool thing. I can maybe do that with this current buffer, but I'm going to switch to the other buffer so I don't erase this one yeah. and capture that new, like kind right. of negotiating the, the physical, or sorry, the software like trap tables, uh, mm -hmm. as it were, like, you know, mm -hmm. I want to put this net sample here because I might use it later because mm -hmm. you did a, a different thing there. So I want to go back and maybe come back to that, yeah. you know. But like, how does that feel then also being kind of cons a constructing your instrument as you go yeah. and be also entirely reliant and deciding based on what I'm doing or have done, you know, it is weird. And I think particularly coupled with the fact that I, I am consciously avoiding the Mickey Mousing thing, yeah, which would make it much easier because then I, you could do a yeah. thing and I could be like jamming there with you, but like yeah. that could get very boring, very old quickly. quickly yeah. yeah, and then you're too much just following me. Yeah, then... so that that kind of in in an effect sort of paints me in a smaller corner. So like it kind of the way I kind of think about it is try to capture some novel sound that you made that would lend itself well to perhaps a lot of different transformations. Mm -hmm. So like that there's a lot of meat on that. Um, so being, you know, careful on what I capture and the fact that I only have four, again, a limitation of, of my choice here, but I only have four of these moments that I can kind of snapshot um, means I have to be kind of like conscious. And at the moment I have, uh, yeah, there's four there. I have some of the loud chimey stuff. Yeah. I think I still have some of the very first thing you did, which was might have been that other bell um, the, yeah. the sort of the toothy bell, I don't know what those are yeah. called. Yeah, uh, elephant bells. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then uh, some towel stuff. So, like, yeah, there's four things there worth that right. I kind of, at the end, I then navigated and went between them yeah. and got some patterns going on one while going to another. But it, it's, it's, um, it's a challenge, which is mm -hmm. interesting to play with. And I, I found it quite challenging with, because I've done this instrument with quite a lot of instruments, of drums, piano, mm -hmm. and you know, all sorts of things. But... Um, I haven't done it a lot with instruments that are more textural. Yeah, and that's you played what I was quite wondering. textural, yeah. which was like uh, I had to kind of like accommodate. 
and like sort of adapt to that because I'm, mm -hmm. I'm much more used to like piano guitar like a lot of these yeah. are like percussion or percussion-esque instruments yeah. in terms yeah. of like their decay so yeah. I've, I'm more used to it seems I'm more used to that kind of envelope and, and sort of way to transform stuff because then that stuff you can go backward like there's a lot more yeah um, orientation matters more whereas with texture forward or backward is doesn't Just matter nearly similar, as much yeah, yeah. Um, so that's kind of new right? yeah that's interesting yeah yeah, I think like um, I, I, my approach is is trying to get away from just the whacking, like the single yeah, yeah. sounds of percussion, and say, okay, how can I extend these these sounds? Uh, so I, I guess that's why texture have kind of come to texture. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's interesting with an instrument you've developed that is also you know it it, could, it would be maybe taking melodies and mm. and working with that. Like I don't know if you have do you do like a spectral analysis or like processing there? With this, it, it, no, it, it's it's fairly. I mean. There's uh, like a, at a simple level, like record and play stuff with some kind of control over that, mm -hmm. and then a, a few effects that I can turn on and off. Right, yeah. and that's kind of like again a conscious limitation of what's going on here. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 um, purposefully crude in that way, mm -hmm. right. as a, meant to be just kind of like in the moment and just kind of grabbing things and crudely yeah. moving them around. Um, but yeah, it's something to think about in terms of like how to work with specifically texture because that's mm -hmm. that's a, a, a new. Not terribly new, but like it's a new sure, challenge. Sure. It's, a, it's a kind of a new take on it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Should we should we play again or? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me turn this back up. And maybe I'll use my other instrument as well, so we'll have two controllers going. Yeah, yeah. Simultaneously. I don't know how how well it'll work though.
If you'd like to support the making of these videos, please join our Patreon. The link is in the description below. Thanks for watching.